California ground squirrel is in the genus Autospermophilus and in the species Spermophilus biche. Anatomical features. Ground squirrels contain melanophores, which are a type of pigment cell that in particular produce and store melanin. This is the most abundant pigment in vertebrates that is biosynthesized and deposited in skin, hair, and feathers. In squirrels, this is what gives rise to the brownish gray fur with cream spots and flecks on its back. It has a darker gray color that runs from its head down to the middle of its back. Its shoulders and the side of its head are a lighter gray. Their color also helps in camouflage and hiding from predators. The ground squirrel is about 18 inches long and has a white underside, a long bushy tail, and a white ring around their big black eyes. Feeding Ground squirrels are primarily herbivorous, but they do eat some insects so they can be considered omnivores. Aside from insects, they can also feed on bird eggs and carrion, which is the decaying flesh of dead animals. Their diet changes within the season. For instance, after emerging from hibernation, they feed almost exclusively on green grasses and herbaceous plants. When annual plants begin to dry and produce seed, squirrels switch to seeds, grains, and nuts and begin to store food for inactive periods. The switch to seeds occurs over a two-week period. This is important to observe these feeding patterns and choices because ground squirrel food preference can influence the effectiveness of certain management options. For example, when squirrels are feeding on seeds and grains, toxic baits that use grains as carriers are more readily accepted and may be ineffective at times of year when the squirrels prefer fresh foliage. Reproduction. Ground squirrels breed once a year, averaging seven to eight per litter. Breeding takes place early in the year or in early spring, depending on location and subspecies. In Southern California, breeding begins in December. In the Central Valley, the time frame is February through April, and in the mountain ranges, breeding begins later. Gestation is 25 to 30 days, and then the young are born in the burrow and grow rapidly. When they are about six weeks old, they emerge from the burrow, and at six months, they resemble adults. They may live four to five years, but the average is one to two years. This is due to the amount of predators since they are diurnal animals. The three recommended cultural control methods for the California ground squirrel are trapping, hunting, and burrow destruction. Trapping can be done year-round when populations are low to moderate. Live traps such as the have a heart and squirrelinator capture the squirrel alive but are not recommended because the California Fish and Game Code specifies it is illegal to release the animal elsewhere without a permit. There are many types of traps that neutralize the squirrel such as box traps and tunnel traps which are used with bait and work well when introduced, baited, but unset until squirrels become comfortable taking bait from the trap. Another effective squirrel trap is the conibear number 110. To set the trap, compress the spring until both ends nearly touch. Open the jaws of the trap until the release can be securely latched in the notch of the trigger. Place the trap flush against the burrow opening and hammer a stake through the chain so traps do not get taken by scavenging predators. It is important to keep non-target species in mind when trapping to minimize the possibility of capturing an endangered or protected animal. Experienced hunters can be effective with the 22 caliber rifle in reducing squirrel populations in areas safe to shoot when population numbers are low. Hunting is very time consuming as ground squirrels will burrow after the first shot is fired. The use of lead ammunition is prohibited when within range of the California condor. Destroying burrows can be effective when done properly, although often requires much larger and expensive equipment as opposed to trapping and hunting. Three methods of burrow destruction are deep ripping, burrow blocking, and the rotinator. Deep ripping is limited to large open fields that are accessible by heavy equipment capable of pulling a shank through the soil at a minimum of 20 inches to be effective. This method collapses burrows by breaking up soil 
and filling tunnels and passageways, but is the most expensive option. Burrow blocking is a relatively new technique which mixes sand and water into a slurry. The slurry of sand and water is pumped into the burrow until it will not hold anymore. When the water percolates out of the slurry, a tight sand plug is left behind trapping the squirrel inside. Equipment to perform this can be expensive and it presents a new variable of introducing foreign soil. The rodinator can be useful in burrows that have not yet developed into complex tunneling systems. This equipment works by passing a mixture of propane and oxygen gas into the burrow for a period of time before igniting. When the gas ignites, it pressurizes the burrow and creates a concussive blast which can cause the burrow to collapse or it can kill the squirrel if hit by- And then you get to say, FIRE IN THE HOLE! FIRE IN THE HOLE! <laughs> now that's what I like to hear. <laughs> Fumigation works best when the soil is damp or moist especially through the rainy and hibernation seasons. If the soil is too dry, the gas will dissipate through the soil pores and not reach toxic levels in the burrow. The two most popular types of fumigants are aluminum phosphide and gas cartridges. Aluminum phosphide is the least expensive of the fumigant applications. The tablets or pellets are activated by the moisture in the soil and then the gas is inhaled by the squirrel. Aluminum phosphide is also an effective method in controlling flea populations on squirrels. This method requires a limited use permit and professional application. It is 97 to 100% effective. Gas cartridges are more expensive than aluminum phosphide, but these do not require an applicator's license or special permits. After puncturing the cartridge cap, you insert the fuse. Place the lit cartridge into the active burrow entrance. Immediately seal and tightly pack the opening with soil. Look for escaping gas from other burrow entrances and cover these as well. Recheck the area after two days to see if the burrows have been reopened. If so, the area will need to be retreated. When ignited, the gas cartridge releases either carbon monoxide or sulfur dioxide, depending on the type of cartridge you're using. The gas replaces oxygen in the squirrel's bloodstream and asphyxiates them. This method is effective about 75% of the time. As you can see, toxic baits can be a good next strategy after fumigation when the squirrels are more interested in grain feeding. Generally, toxic baits are restricted use pesticides. It is important to follow pesticide use directions carefully and accurately so that you do not encourage bait resistance in the ground squirrel population. The two popular types of baits are an acute toxicant, zinc phosphide, and a first generation anticoagulant rodenticide, collectively called FGARs. With both pesticides, it is important to monitor and collect dead carcasses and properly dispose of them by either deep burial, burning, or double bagging and placing in a secured trash receptacle to prevent non-target consumption of the dead rodent. Zinc phosphide is a quick-acting acute bait that terminates the squirrel shortly after ingestion. There is some bait aversion with this product, so pre-baiting is recommended. Special care needs to be used with application of this bait since there is no antidote if accidentally consumed by a non-targeted pet. The zinc phosphide mixes with the stomach acid of the squirrel to produce phosphine gas, which kills within 12 hours. While non-target secondary consumption of the dead rodent is still a concern, it is lower since the gas usually leaves the squirrel before scavengers can move in. Zinc phosphide can only be applied by a professional by either broadcast or spot treatment, and it can only be applied once a year. FGARs are toxic baits that act over a period of time, slowly poisoning the squirrel by impacting its ability to create blood clots. This measure requires the squirrel to consume multiple doses of the bait, and if the bait stations are not properly used, non-target ingestion can occur. This bait does have an antidote in case of accidental pet consumption. The bait can either be applied through broadcast, spot treated, or is typically placed into a secured bait station. Management is a year-round task. Choosing the right control method during the right time of year is the key to success.
California ground squirrel is adaptive to that of nearly every environment and climate ranging from the Sierra Nevada mountains to the Central Valley and coastal regions with the exception of high density forest areas. Their preferred living conditions consist of open rangeland with dispersed landscape obstacles in which can be used as cover from predators and shelter for burrowing and nesting sites. A burrow system consists of several entrances roughly 4 to 5 inches in diameter, 2 to 4 feet in depth, and up to 30 feet in length. Ground squirrels are very aware of their surroundings and use a series of burrow entrances to travel within an established perimeter in order to keep cover and avoid potential predators. Individual squirrels communicate through a series of chirping when scouting. They are primarily active during the day when it is warm and retreat into the burrow system when temperatures cool off. During winter months, adults hibernate until the appropriate conditions occur. However, young can still be active in climates that do not undergo severe cold temperatures. Ground squirrels will typically live together as a family, but also on their own as individuals when fully mature and expanding from its previous territory in search of a mate or new areas that have resources to use. Families tend to have overlapping territories and a forage radius of about 100 yards from the burrow. Adults will also go through a different kind of inactive period called estivation in summer months when temperatures are too high to tolerate. Squirrels will plug the burrow entrance to reduce the amount of heat that enters the burrow system in an attempt to cool it down. One of the key signs of squirrel infestation is the presence of burrows. Active squirrel burrows will have fresh mounds of soil, food litter, and scat near the entrances. Inactive burrows will have leaves, spiderwebs, and other debris covering the hole. If it is a high moisture area, the squirrel scat will be soft, twisted, and clumped together. If it is a dry area, the scat will resemble pellets, with one end pointed and the other having a dimple. California ground squirrels are the leading vertebrate pest in California. They directly damage plants, crops, and fruit trees by feeding on grains, fruits, nuts, some vegetables, bulbs, stems, leaves, and cotton. Ground squirrels also dig up plants. They can girdle trees by removing strips of outer bark. Ground squirrels will gnaw on drip lines, irrigation sprinklers, and emitters. The squirrels burrowing for shelter is very destructive. They will burrow around tree roots and undermine the structure of trees, sometimes toppling them over. They will burrow beneath buildings, which leads to costly repairs. The biggest problem with squirrel burrows is they can be large and often cause severe erosion problems. Squirrel burrows in farming situations can create havoc by affecting tractor and mowing operations. Not only are ground squirrels destructive to the physical environment, they are also carriers of harmful diseases. The squirrel is the main carrier of the Black Plague. The disease is transmitted from squirrels through fleas. The disease can be contracted by other wild animals, household pets, and people to which it is deadly.